Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are a little late this morning, so we are going to try and do this fast. You ready? Okay, so today is Tuesday, April 9, 2019. And the gospel comes from St. John, chapter 8, verses 21 to 30. Oh, Ava Grace, what's wrong with us, Ava Grace? Okay, well, this is again another uh, gospel from St. John. And I just want to comment at what our Lord says towards the end of this gospel. Where our Lord says to the Jews here, I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent, who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Do we hear that? I always do what is pleasing to him. So here again, you know, our Lord continues the discourse with the Jews, right? Trying to make them understand the unity in the Trinity. That the Father and He are one. That Jesus only does what the Father wants Him to do. What the Father sent Him to do. Okay? And He emphasizes at the end, in which is what I think we have to keep in mind. I always do what is pleasing to Him. Now maybe we can ask ourselves that question. Do we always do what is pleasing to God? Do we always do what is pleasing to God? Is that our disposition all the time? Or do we sometimes not care about whether God is going to be pleased with what we are doing or not? Are we going to even bother with, ah, I, don't like, I, don't, I don't know, I don't care whether God is pleased with me or not. Right? But look at what Jesus says. I always do what is pleasing <coughs> to Him. And that is why, remember when He was baptized? By St. John, what did the voice coming out of the clouds in the heavens say? It says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And no wonder God the Father is pleased because Jesus himself says here that I always do what is pleasing to him. And because of that, he has not left me alone. <coughs> he has not left me alone. He does not abandon me. He's always with me. He always favors me. That is what the Lord uh, uh, is telling us here. Because I always do what is pleasing to him. Think about that for a second. I always do what's pleasing to him. See, that is the key. That is the key to always be in good graces with God. To always do what is pleasing to Him. And then, God will not leave us alone. God will not abandon us. God is not going to leave us to our own resources. God will always guide everything we say and do. God is going to govern our lives. God is going to be in charge of our lives. God will sometimes permit some apparently bad things to happen to us. Not because He wants evil to happen. Because God can never will evil. But sometimes because God wants to arrange our lives in such a way that we learn something even from what is apparently bad for us. Just think, our Lord's going to be crucified again. In the next week, we're going to commemorate that crucifixion. Was that a bad thing? Really? Was that really an evil thing that happened to Jesus? 
If you think about it, no, right? No. Because that apparent suffering, that apparent evil, actually resulted in our own salvation. Okay? Our own salvation from sin and death. But it does not end there. It does not stop there. Right? It, this is where the, uh, our Protestant brothers are wrong. When they thought that, well, with one act of the crucifixion and the salvific um, mission of Jesus Christ on the cross, all problems are solved. Oh, all my sins are forgiven and anything I commit will be forgiven. No, 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 no. That is not the way to interpret the, the crucifixion and salvation. Right? Uh, we still have to do what is pleasing to Him. Always. Always. Like Jesus reminds us here. I always do what is pleasing to Him. So the same thing is true with us. Yes, our Lord freed us from sin, from original sin, and from, uh, 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 from the curse of death, and opened up heaven for us. But we still have to do our part. It's not a, a blanket guarantee that, uh, you know, hey, I already saved you guys, so now you can continue to commit sin and, and it's okay, you know. Uh, you'll still go to heaven. Oh, wrong. Oh, you just accept uh, me as your uh, God and Savior and, uh, and you'll be okay. No, wrong. No, that's not, that's not the right theology here. That's not the right way of understanding what our Lord meant uh, by His crucifixion and death. We still have to imitate the example of our Lord as he says here. I always do what is pleasing to him. So think about that. Think about that for a second here and think about that all the time. You know, every time that you are tempted to commit sin, ask yourself, am I doing anything here that's not pleasing to God? Am I, through this action, through this through this thought, through this plan, through this uh, manner of acting, am I doing what is pleasing to God or not? Okay? It's a good thought that I recommend we always keep in mind all throughout the day, all throughout the day, not only this Lent, but all throughout the day, from the moment we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed. That is why when we do the morning offering, right, in the morning, what do we tell our Lord? We offer you all our thoughts, words, actions, joys, and suffering of this day. That's everything. That's everything that happens to you in that one day. That's what we pray in the, in the morning offering, right? So do we keep in mind what we just said in the morning offering all throughout the day? Because it only translates to one thing. If we offer up our thoughts, words, actions, joys, it only translates to one thing. And that is that we do what is pleasing to God. That, what, that our actions and our works and anything we think and do is not something that we do just because we want to please ourselves. Okay? Many times that's the big temptation. We do things because it's pleasurable to us, because it pleases us, because it satisfies us. Well, what about asking ourselves, okay, does this also, and primarily, please God? Does this action of mine primarily please God, even if it pleases me too? Does it primarily please God? And if we answer yes to that question, we will never go wrong. Hey, right? Okay. That's it for us, folks. We're headed off for Mass. Hi, Tito Jimmy. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.